So yesterday at BlizzCon, we finally got to meet the new hero of Overwatch, Sombra. Well, we kind of already knew a little bit about her because you guys have been dropping hints like crazy. This is some of the developers behind Overwatch. How has it been to follow the the fans' investigation, trying to to figure out what's up next? <laughs> it's definitely been it's been an interesting journey, as to say the least. I mean, seeing the excitement of the community around around Sombra has been really great to see. And now here at BlizzCon, you know, we're actually players can not just like see her, you know, get all these clues about it, but there was a, this awesome animated short, you know, showing off her character, and they actually get to play it on the show floor. So, I mean, seeing that reaction from the, the fans has been really awesome. It's great. <laughs> Short and direct. I like that. So, like I said, we already know a little bit about her, but can you share some details with us, like her background story? Who is she, and where did you guys find the inspiration for her? Sure. Yeah, um, so uh, we, we take inspiration from a lot of different areas at Blizzard. We're all, we're all gamers, we're all invested in, in geek culture. Um, but Sombra, um, she kind of grew um, out of the, the Omnic crisis that happened 30 years ago. So um, it, it was something that kind of had a, a major impact um, globally. And out of that, she started hacking. And this was the way that, that she kind of managed to survive following the crisis and uh, she got better at it and she started taking the the notice of um, a local organization called Los Muertos um, and they're a quasi criminal organization they call themselves freedom fighters in Mexico um, and she started doing hacking for them and quickly rose up through the ranks um, and as as she got better and better um, she started taking the notice of much larger organizations throughout the world. And um, if you watch the any of the two Sombra movies that that we released yesterday, you can find them on PlayOverwatch.com. Um, you can start kind of piecing together um, who this other organization could be and, and what role she might she might take in it. Um, on, on the other side, on, on the gameplay side, um, there was um, a lot of um, a lot of uh, desire on the team to. Um, make a hero that used stealth abilities. Um, and it's somebody that we've been talking about for a long time. We were developing her um, even before we were developing Genji on the team. Um, but getting stealth to work just right um, is something that um, is really complicated um, and really challenging to, to make it so that a character with stealth feels powerful but is also not incredibly frustrating for the other team to, to fight against is kind of a, a balancing act. And so we spent a lot of time on that. And I think that the hero that we have right now, um, we actually finally captured it. It's, it's the fantasy that, that everybody wants to play. Um, and, and I think she feels really, really good. So besides her ability to use stealth and invisibility, can you tell us a little bit about what she can do and, and how is this going to affect the battlefield? Well, I mean, she can hack players, which um, silences them um, for six seconds, so they can't use their abilities. So she can set up a lot of plays for her team with that. Um, she can also hack uh, health packs, which prevent, like if she hacks a health pack, then the enemy team can't use it, and it, and it actually respawns much faster for your own team. Um, and then her um, ultimate is also very powerful. Um, it hacks everyone around her in an area, and also destroys um, barriers like Reinhardt's um, or Winston's. So, you know, with her ultimate, she can really set up her team for um, a real, one really big push. So, I mean, I think um, while a lot of her fantasy is this like very stealthy character that you know it's a little infiltrator, we definitely wanted to give her something that like, could definitely affect the team. You know, make be part of the, she could feel as part of the team, and I think her ultimate is a big part of that. Um, She's also got um, this other ability, uh, it's her translocator beacon, um, and it, it is really, really fun to use. It's an object that she throws out into the world, and then at any time over the next 15 seconds, she can teleport to it. Um, and it, it almost reminds you a little bit of Tracer's recall. And Sombra itself, um, I like to compare her to Tracer sometimes because when you're really using all of Tracer's abilities, she has the blink and the recall, uh, and the pulse bomb, when you use those all just right, 
it everything kind of clicks into place and it's so cohesive that it almost feels magical sometimes to do it it feels so good and and sombra is the same way where you're you're stealthing one moment you're hacking a player the other moment getting into a brief firefight and then using your translocator beacon to completely withdraw and get someplace else and and kind of like a secret pro tip is if you use that translocator beacon a lot of times you want to throw it next to health because you'll do that you'll you'll take some damage You'll teleport out right next to a health pack, grab the health, and then you can hack the health pack. Now nobody on the other team, even if they, they try to chase you down, you're now next to a health pack that only you can use in a one-on-one -on -one fight with somebody else that you have advantage over at that point. And it, you sort of feel this, this um, like the combination of abilities feels great. And then you have this moment where you're like, I'm smarter than you because I figured all this stuff out and I set up this moment where I can, where I can take you out. Yeah, or you can just be super aggressive and use the <laughs> use the translocator in a really like hyper aggressive way, and that doesn't work out. Maybe you needed that escape plan, but it's I mean that having that option and knowing like which one should I use, what's the right thing, it's it's one of the things that makes her playing her really really fun. So it's gonna be fun to see how she's going to change everything up. But Sombra isn't the only thing that you guys unveiled here at BlizzCon. You are also talking a little bit about an upcoming map called Oasis. Can you tell me a bit about that? Yeah, definitely. Sure. Um, so Oasis is going to be Overwatch's 14th map to go into the competitive and quick play rotation. Um, and it's going to be our fourth control map. And um, some people think of our control maps as our king of the hill mode. Um, and it takes place in this futuristic city out in the middle of a desert in what is modern day Iraq right now. Um, and I think when, when you run around, it looks, it looks absolutely beautiful. Um, the spaces are designed differently than, a, than the other control maps, so I think it should offer players a fresh experience in there. Um, and for the first time, we've put a jump pad in one of our maps. Um, and so there's a lot of really cool opportunities to do interesting things with the jump pad. Um, the first time you see a McCree ulting, as he's as he's using one of these jump pads, it kind of it kind of changes your view of what's possible in Overwatch maps. Furthermore, you have also been talking about some new arcade modes. Can you tell us even more about that? Yeah. Um, so arcade mode, it's uh, this really new and exciting thing f for us, where we're um, using it to introduce uh, two new game modes. Um, we sort of see the arcade as this like awesome like lab laboratory for us to. Try try new things, you know, give players new experiences for the game. So, um, in the arcade, you'll see um, this one v one mystery duel uh, mode where you um, it's a best of nine. Um, you play a round where each player will have, be a random hero. You'll you'll fight it out, um, and uh, you know, after like uh, the first one to get the five um, round wins takes 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 the match, um, and that's. Because that's a one-on-one, -on -one and we didn't need as much space. You know, our normal maps are like m designed for like the quick play and the competitive play rule sets. So we cr actually even created a brand new map, um, um, Echo Point Antarctica, um, for for this game mode. Um, and it's a pretty interesting map because it's actually where May um, spent her um, spent her time before. Um, well, she was an early she was an early Overwatch. There was a horrible storm that came through. She went under hibernation. Didn't quite go as she thought. She ended up hibernating for 10 years instead of two months. She came out. So you actually see, like this is sort of like the like home base of May. So you see, really see a lot of like her backstory within the map. Um, and then like the arcade, it doesn't just have like the 1v1 um, dual mode. It also has this interesting like 3v3 elimination mode where you know you and two friends or you could like um, queue up solo and um, uh, meet new two, two new teammates. You can form up a team, and it's best of um, five. Fight it out amongst like the two like groups of th groups of three. Um, over, and you can change your team compositions between rounds. Um, and we think it's another like very interesting, cool way to play it, like Overwatch. And then of course we there's God, there's so much more. There's like mm -hmm. five different like things within the ar the arcade. Um, you know, there's uh, we have this new playlist. We like we used to have the weekly brawls. Um, that had these like, that were kind of like, had different like rules. Like you might have one that was just Mercy and Pharaohs, or you might have um, one that was like just tanks. And we took all of those, and instead of making it, instead of changing those weekly, you'll actually go into a playlist and you'll play one with one set of rules, and then the next game it'll change. 
So we hope that that'll be something that'll be a really, really like, super fresh experience as you as you continue to play. And the great thing about the arcade is that we really see this as something that will curate over time. You know, things that are very popular. Um, you know, maybe we'll like you know continue to extend. You know, we'll do even more for um, things that aren't as popular. We might replace with something else. And we really like just look at feedback and uh, see how everything goes. Can I add one thing too? I mean, we could talk about the arcade all day long because it's like it's such an exciting feature for us. Um, and everything that Scott said um, is part of it, and it's amazing. And the only thing I really want to add is it, is it feels like it's a totally different way to to play Overwatch. So when when you're playing the one v one mode, it's still with all of the same Overwatch heroes, but you think about the experience um, totally different than than you do when you, than when you're playing competitive or quick play. Um, and so. It can be a great way to warm up before you you play a game. It can be like a great way to like to have like a cool down after like this really intense night of playing. Um, and it, it can also just be um, a way to to play um, that you haven't experienced in Overwatch before. If you're the type of player that that really likes that one v one experience because it's sort of a hallmark of some traditional FPSs, this might be like the way for you to get into Overwatch because when you are playing it you really learn like the intricacies of a lot of the different heroes. Um, as soon as you get matched up with another Widowmaker in, in Eco Point Antarctica, suddenly you're like, okay, when I'm coming out of the spawn room, this is what I'm going to grapple to. And as soon as I'm done grappling, here's where I'm going to be aiming. And you're kind of like planning through everything that your hero is going to do. Um, and it's so much fun. And part of the reason why it's fun is because it's totally different than anything you've experienced in Overwatch so far. So lastly, when are all these things actually going to hit the game? When are they going to go live? Sure. Uh, so Somber in the Arcade uh, will be available on the public test realm, uh, hopefully early next week. Um, and depending on how testing goes, uh, hopefully we'll be able to release it um, to the full game soon. Oasis, we plan on like that. It's, we're still working on Oasis. Our artists are still finalizing a lot of the details there. That'll go into testing in December, and hopefully we'll have that ready for release um, at the very beginning of next year. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs>